we all got into it because we have killer taste. And we always felt like we can do this X, Y, Z thing. Um, and then we start to create it. And we realize there's this gap between what we're creating and what we like. When did you begin to realize that if you poured all of your energy and passion into your art, that one day someone would give you a job? When did I realize? Or that you'd be discovered? Yeah. You know, that's, a re that's an interesting question because it comes down to the definition of the word discovered. You know, what does discovered mean? I would say that uh, I, as a kid, and I think probably every filmmaker watching this probably feels this way. You look at whatever, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you go, I could do that. I wonder if anyone else believes I can do that. Like it's, I now I have to convince the world that I can actually do it. Now, in my case, the people that have believed in me and given me the shot have not been the people I expected. So uh, it, it, it was, came, it would be like a best friend who just happened to be in a position to that they could hire me. And it just like came from back here and you're like, wait, what? You're gonna, that's when I was, it was like, it was one of those things where I always felt like I had something to contribute, something to give. I was just wondering how long it was gonna take for anyone to actually notice. You know what I mean? It's almost the other way around. It's like, I always, but I think we're all that way. We all feel that way. We all feel like we have something special and you're just waiting for the world to catch up <laughs> to where we are. Um, that can be a frustrating position, especially if you feel like no one's discovered you yet. But um, I have always found that when it does happen, and no matter which level you're on, it does happen, and that, that could mean a movie deal or it could mean getting a nice job, you know, dragging a commercial, it always comes from the last place I expected, usually a friend or a contact of some sort. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and I think that, yeah, it comes down to that maddening place of how long is it going to take for everyone else to discover what I can do? This is where, and this is where it's so important to continue to create and put out there stuff that you can do. <laughs> There's a great quote from Ira Glass. Uh, who is the host of, um, or the creator of This American Life. And, and he talks about how when we got into the art, whatever it is that we got into, um, we all got into it because we have killer taste. And we always felt like we can do this X, Y, Z thing. Um, and then we start to create it. And we realize there's this gap between what we're creating and what we like. And we see that gap because we have good taste. And the only way to close that gap is to continue to create work. Lots of work, thousands of hours. And that's the only way to close that gap. And if you find yourself not creating anything and, and you're in this business just toiling away, editing reality television for years and years and years and never actually making anything, then you should probably, you're never gonna close that gap unless you do it. That is how people will discover you because the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. And eventually, law of averages says that that is what will happen. Come back and ask me in a year and we'll see, you know, and Spielberg is called, no, I'm just you know, we'll see if that actually pays off, but um, that's how it's worked so far. Do you think the notion of being discovered is, is sort of an old term? You know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking of, you know, like a talent show from the 80s where you're gonna be picked and you're going places, kid, but it almost seems like now, they want to see how much work of your own have you put in without someone picking you. It, it seems like things have changed a lot. It, there has been a change. Well, the one thing that's changed, I think, is that um, the ability to create amazing stuff is is has come down to other levels where you can reach it. Because you know, back in the day, to create anything that looked any good, you'd have to rent these really expensive cameras and big lights and stuff. You don't have to do that anymore. I mean, it's just the way iPhones shoot looks amazing, like really amazing. So 
there is still, I think, the divide between the, the threshold of television movies, you know, working with Disney on a thing that people have heard of. There is that little divide. So that still exists. And there's, there's that stuff and then there's everything else. But there is still so much amazing work out there to be had. You know, there's still, and you can be, I, the discovery can happen on those other little projects. Um, and that is, I think it's uh, really fun to do it because like, for example, I do a lot of work with hospitals and hospitals a lot of times hire me to create these little stories and I'm telling you, they are so much fun to do because they're little short films that are usually really meaningful, really heartfelt. You're working with actors and, and it is, you're making a little movie. You get great practice and it is super, super fun. Uh, and I was discovered from that based on, you know, people that I knew and, and just doing little shorts of my own. Like they would, they would see a little short film or whatever hits a festival or something. And then they go, Oh, we should hire that guy to bring, do our little thing. That's how all that stuff happened. So you could call that a discovery. Now, is it going to win an Academy Award? No, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm doing what I dreamed of doing as a kid and it is a blast. And you know, People may watch this and go, oh, that guy's never made a multi-million dollar thing. Okay, you're right, I haven't. But I'm having a freaking great time making and telling stories and moving people. It is, I'm it is just, the, it is the most fun career that you can have because you're telling stories and you're taking audiences on a ride. No matter where you're doing it, whether that's, a wedding video or completely on the opposite end with a Marvel film. You're doing the same job and it is really great. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if that answered your original question about being discovered, but I do think that there is a, when they're trusting you with telling the story for their brand or for their whatever, uh, there is a discovery process that does need to happen. They need to see that you have the talent to actually manipulate and tell a story and craft a narrative in a way that wraps up what they're trying to sell or do or say. Right. So hence the sort of corporate video that was in um, Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. I think also in Blade Runner too. Didn't they have a few, like they'd have these billboards yes. with these commercials? Well, that's right. You, I mean, most times when you see a sci-fi act, you know, stuff like that, fantasy, they'll have some sort of way to communicate information. Um, <laughs> that's that's corporate video one-on-one -on -one right there and heck what better way to practice you know if you are gonna let's just say you could look at your life from beginning to end and you knew that in I don't know 10 years you were gonna get to direct the next Blade Runner well wouldn't it be good to practice and you know that in that Blade Runner there's gonna be a whole time travel element that you're gonna have to fold into it and explain to an audience how it works. Wouldn't it be good to like kind of practice that now with your, with AT&T client that you have or, or whatever, you know, like, wouldn't it be good to like kind of maybe, cause if you mess that up, who cares? You know, it's just the a corporate video that not a lot of people are going to see. Wouldn't that be much better to do it that way? And then by the time you get to Blade Runner sequel, oh man, I got this. I've been doing this. This is going to be fun. And now I have all the money to do it. Like, that's a great way to look at it, you know? Did you see the Apple commercial around 1984? It's just the one where they throw the thing into the screen. Yes, I think so. Right. Directed by Ridley Scott. Yeah, that, that, that Apple commercial, isn't that crazy? It has this amazing look, this really cool story. It never, it aired one time on television, I believe. And this is pre-internet. And it made so many ripples and it really made Ridley Scott's career. Like from there, he went on and did, I think, I think Alien was after that. Mm. He might've done The Duelist at that point, but yeah, that was, cause Ridley Scott was a commercial director before he became uh, doing movies. So yeah, 